A girl confesses her love to Mako, but due to various reasons at home, he can't reciprocate her feelings, and he turns her down. The girl runs away in tears, and Mako thanks his teacher, Sayuri, for monitoring the confession. He had her on standby just to make sure that the confession wasn't a joke or a prank. Sayuri is concerned that Mako distrusts people this much, and she advises him to open up a little more so he can make friends. Mako retorts that he doesn't need friends, and he abruptly leaves. As long as he moves carefully, he believes that no problems will arise. He'll never make the same mistake again. Back in elementary school, Mako was the class clown, which he leveraged to make his crush, Shizuka, laugh. However, one day, while joking on the playground with her, she accidentally tripped on a rock and fell. Mako is accused of pushing her down on purpose, despite asserting his innocence. Seeing that Shizuka's knee was bleeding, he hurried off to get some band-aids in his bag, but when he came back, his classmates had already taken her away to the nurse. As a result, Mako became the class pariah, and nasty rumors about him began to spread. Nobody believed that he ran away to get some bandages, but he hoped that his family would take his side. His family did not take his side. Upon receiving news that he hurt a girl, his mother immediately called Shizuka's mother and forced Mako to apologize. Mako had no friends and no family to call his allies. Feeling the hopelessness of the situation, Mako decided not to talk at all. During middle school, he befriended a bookish girl named Sato after he returned her phone to her. A close relationship between them blossomed, and for the first time in a long time, Mako was happy. Unfortunately, due to another misunderstanding, he became known as the boy who attacked Sato. Mako ended up alone again after nobody believed his side of the story. One day, a girl named Kisaragi asks Mako to be her boyfriend, despite his bad reputation. Regardless, Mako agrees to start out as friends, and he agrees to meet with her that weekend. When the day of their supposed date arrived, it was revealed to have all been a prank orchestrated by a few boys in the class, with Kisaragi's unwilling compliance. Her confession was all part of a punishment game. Mako's heart, which was barely alive after what happened with Sato, was now completely ruined. Mako closed off his heart, but bad things kept happening. A few weeks later, a girl named Nanako befriended him out of the blue. Her friends warned her that he was bad news, but Nanako genuinely didn't seem to mind. One day, Nanako invited him out to karaoke with some of her friends, and since they weren't going to be alone, he decided to trust her. He shouldn't have trusted her. Once again, Mako was tricked. He never should have eased up, and he hates himself for falling for the same trick over and over again. When Mako entered high school Shizuka, his old crush, also happened to be in the same school as him, just like many other of their female classmates. Mako, having learned his lesson, decided not to get involved with her. Regardless, Shizuka followed him home, where she remarked on his gloominess and lack of friends. She offered to be his friend, stating that she never believed in any of the bad rumors about him. A sense of uneasiness and discomfort develops in Mako's heart. Mako asks her why she only started talking to him now, and she explains that she was too nervous to talk to him in middle school, and she was too afraid to say anything before when the witch hunt on his head began. Mako doesn't care. He wants her to stay away from him. He is truly sorry, and he even takes responsibility for what happened on the playground. But it's too late now. It's too late for her to say she trusts him after all these years. Mako arrives home and is greeted by his sister, Haruka. Mako's gloominess and overall distrust of others have seeped into even his home life, and Haruka remarks that he used to be happier before. His mother tells him to get ready so they can go out and celebrate his first day as a family, but Mako is tired of it. He tells them to enjoy their dinner on their own. His mother hopes that he can stop sulking already, but his only reply is that he'll be more careful in the future. Mako retreats to his room and notices that he has two new messages. Mako writes light novels in his free time, and it serves as his only hobby. He receives a message from his editor explaining that a publishing company has expressed interest in publishing his work. Mako finds it troublesome, and he pretends to never see their message. The next day, Mako struggles to stay awake after staying up all night thinking about the publishing company's email. He glances at the girl next to the seat, Anri, who is also eating alone. Just like him, she also has a bad reputation. A girl approaches Mako and asks to eat with him, but after all the previous incidents with Nanako and the like, he knows better than that. He shoos her away, and instead, he asks Anri if he can read the book she's reading and they exchange books. Nobody else tries to be friends with Anri, which is precisely why Mako can trust her. The girl, ignored, runs off. However, Mako acknowledges that the girl is right. This is the first time he's ever talked to someone of his own accord, and he himself is confused as to why. Mako, accompanied by his sister Haruka, walks home from school bringing groceries, but he is still hung up on why he talked to Anri on his own. 
When he spots Anri walking along the road, smiling at something on her phone, Haruka also spots her and calls her a delinquent. When she passes by, she squints and Maka wonders what that was all about. When Anri is finally out of earshot, Haruka calls her a weirdo for being a delinquent in this day and age. Mako says something under his breath, but she can't quite hear what he said. She asks Mako why they suddenly drifted apart as siblings. He always played with Shizuka instead of her, so she admittedly felt a little jealous. Haruka could almost choke on her hypocrisy. She admits that she was wrong about all the bad rumors about him, and she just wants to go back to the way things used to be. Mako won't fall for that one again, and he gets a sick feeling in his stomach when she claims to be the only one who believed in him. Mako asks Haruka not to call him older brother anymore. What's done is done. He excuses himself by saying the food is melting, and he runs back home alone. When Mako returns to his writing, he receives fan mail from someone named Pamiko, one of his readers. Pamiko has been sending him lots of fan messages lately, and it is one of the few things that genuinely gives Mako happiness. The next morning, Mako leaves for school as usual, and he spots Shizuko waiting for him at the front gate. He ignores her and walks right past her, but she calls his attention and asks for a serious conversation. The girl next to her, Momo, introduces herself as Shizuka's friend and asserts that Shizuka is being serious. Shizuka begs Mako to give her another chance and she invites him out to a movie to cheer him up. Momo fawns over Shizuka's efforts, but she is much harsher toward Mako, whom she thinks is just acting difficult. Based on how she treats him, she believes in every bad rumor said about him. Mako, tired of this interaction and realizing that being polite won't get him anywhere, prepares to be even harsher than before. But before he can, Anri growls at them to get out of the way. Momo, startled, reminds Anri that they used to be friends. Anri is impressed that she has the gall to say that. Momo asks her to stop with her delinquent act so that the three of them can go back to how things used to be, repeating the same phrase that Mako absolutely detests. I believed in you. Anri snaps, but Mako holds her back and asks her to keep quiet. Mako asks Shizuka and Momo if either of them have ever been subjected to baseless slander or rumors or betrayed by someone they've trusted. He wants one thing and one thing only to be left alone, and he asks them to do just that. It's too late to undo what's been done. Shizuka runs away in tears, and Anri merely looks away to the side. During class, Mako observes Anri practically beaming while reading a light novel on her phone. She suddenly starts typing like a madman on her phone, prompting Mako to check if Pamiko has messaged him again. A few moments later, he receives a message from Pamiko, praising his new chapter. He's glad that she enjoyed it, though he holds off on replying to her until he writes another chapter. Anri suddenly looks at him funny. She starts typing on her phone again, and Mako receives another text alert. Anri, embarrassed, fumbles and drops her phone on the ground. When Mako sees the Pomeranian sticker on the back of her phone, it all clicks. Mako goes over what he saw again, but he finds it unlikely that Anri could ever be Pamiko. When she mentions his online pen name, Nyanta, his heart starts beating fast, and he starts sweating profusely. Regardless, he finds it too unlikely that it could be her. It's all one big coincidence, and he decides to delete her text as soon as class ends. The entire day passes without Mako ever deleting the message. Just holding his phone is making him nauseous, but at the very least, the final homeroom of the day is about to begin, which means he'll be home in no time. Mako glances at Anri, who has her usual guarded and closed off aura. Mako is interested in her, but he decides that it's better not to get involved with her. Sayuri announces that the school trip is coming up, and she advises them to just form groups with their friends. As soon as homeroom ends, Mako gets up to leave. Anri tries to talk to him, but he leaves before she can say anything else. Frustrated, she kicks her desk and tells him to stop trying to be friends with her. She storms out in a huff, prompting Sato to ask him if he's friends with Anri. Sato underwent a dramatic makeover upon entering high school, but she's definitely the same girl from the library incident. Just like Shizuka, Sato tries to coax Mako out of his shell, admitting that the time they spent in the library was fun, and she even entertains the idea that he was her first love. Sato reminds him that Haruka, Nanako, and Kisaragi are all also attending the same school, but Mako has committed to completely wiping them from his memory. Sato wants to be friends with him again, ignoring Mako when he says that there's no need. Sato claims to have learned from romance games that as long as she learns from her mistakes, she can right any wrongs. She brings out her old glasses to try and charm Mako, but Mako remains firm. He won't let himself get sucked into the good old days anymore. He is empty. He brings out his phone after receiving a notification, leading Sato to believe that he plans to take a picture of her. 
Instead, Mako reads a message from Pamiko, stating that she's excited to read his next chapter. Mako ignores Sato and goes home. Reflecting on what Pamiko, or rather, what Amri sent, he concludes that there is no possibility for him to betray. If anything, he'd be the one betraying her, if he didn't put out another chapter. Mako doesn't know if he'll ever finish his story, but what he can do is finish the next chapter. When he arrives home, his mother invites him out on a shopping trip with Haruka, but Mako claims to be meeting a friend. Mako insists that they go on without him, but his mother, tired of his uppity attitude, tells him to let go of the past already. This strikes a nerve. She and Haruko would go places together without him in the past, and she even skipped his middle school graduation. He can't change his troubled past, and he knows that his mother hasn't changed at all. People don't change that quickly. Mako leaves anyway, explaining that he has a friend to meet. Haruka asks him if he can stop meeting with his invisible friend and go out with her and their mother instead. Mako sarcastically replies that his words aren't reliable. He leaves and knowing that she and his mother will likely be going to the new mall that just opened, he heads to an older shopping mall. Thankfully, the food court is empty and he can be by himself in peace. However, by some sheer coincidence, Henry is at the food court too, and he spends a few moments or maybe even minutes watching her various reactions while reading a web novel. Finally, she sets down her phone and starts typing. Mako checks his phone and learns that Anri's web novel is also getting published, even though she stopped updating it a year ago. He receives a message from her, once again praising his latest chapter. Mustering up the courage, Mako buys two orange juices from a store and tries to talk to Anri. She initially mistakes him for another guy hitting on her, but she is shocked to see that it was Mako all along. While sitting together, Anri tries to ask Mako if they can be friends, but he cuts her off before she can and says that he doesn't feel like being friends with her either. Annoyed, Anri claims that while she has bad rumors about her, they're not nearly as bad as the one about him. That's news to Mako. It seems his reputation has gotten worse. Tired, Anri tells him not to bother her anymore. There are a number of bad rumors about Anri, from dating old men to extorting classmates, hitting classmates, sneaking around at night, and lollygagging. But that's all they are rumors. Mako extends an olive branch by offering her orange juice, but she snatches it from his hand and tells him to leave her alone. Mako grabs her arm before she can throw it, but it causes the drink to spill on his clothes. Anri apologizes but is also quick to point out that he's also at fault for being rude to her. His actions do seem frustratingly contradictory. She asks him what he really wants, and Mako gives it some thought. He tells her that he doesn't want to be friends with her out of fear of being betrayed, and likewise, Anri tells him that she doesn't want to be friends with him for the same reason. He asks her why she suddenly stopped writing, and she suddenly gets flustered. She asked him how he found out, but it's not like it was that hard to piece it all together. Instead, she chastises him for killing off so many characters in his stories, but she'll let it slide because the main heroine is really cute. Mako laughs, and he asks her if he can read her stories for a minute. Like all aspiring authors, Anri tells him not to read her early works. Mako reads her early works and is amused that most of them are in the romance genre. Eventually, despite the rocky beginning, Mako and Anri end up bonding over their shared interest in light novels. When night falls, Anri's stomach grumbles. She didn't have lunch. Mako doesn't remember the last time he talked this much, and to a girl, no less. Mako asks Anri why she doesn't want to go home, and she replies that she doesn't get along with her family very well. However, Anri's older sister, Siko, arrives to pick her up. Siko grabs Anri, and upon noticing Mako, asks if the two are friends. The two deny being friends. Siko introduces herself to Mako, and she's happy that her little sister finally has a friend her age. Mako introduces himself, and Siko compares him to Tetsuro, the main character of an anime that Anri likes. Anri gets up to leave, clarifying that she and Mako aren't friends. However, when she mistakenly calls him by his online handle, Nyanta, Siko recognizes him as the author of the popular web novel, Maikiru's Grand Isekai Adventure. Anri pretends not to know what she's talking about, but it's hard to keep it a secret any longer. Siko is revealed to be his editor, and she asks him why he isn't responding to her text. Siko tells Anri that she should have said that she was acquainted with Mako, but again, she insists that they aren't friends. Siko and Anri go home first, but Siko tells Mako that they should talk about the serialization another time. Siko thinks that this is destiny destiny of serializing. Whatever that is, Mako muses that the two sisters couldn't be more different. Siko's charming, friendly attitude is the complete opposite of Shinazuka's rough, aloof attitude. Mako decides not to think about it for now. Anri never would have thought that her own sister would be Mako's editor. 
Mako is silently relieved that it doesn't seem like Anri is leveraging her sister's position to get her own work published. As if reading his mind, Anri asserts that her work is being published by a different company from her sister's. Anri has also read a lot of Mako's work, so she knows that it's good enough to be serialized. She's embarrassed to say it, but she means it. Siko gives him a proverbial slap on the back and points out that he's already good friends with Anri. Mako doesn't seem to think they're friends, but he sees someone who makes his heart stop. Shizuka and Sato are right down the street. Mako does a quick 180 and tries to walk away, but the two girls chase after him. All they want to do is apologize to him, but in the immortal words of One Republic, it's too late to apologize. Mako doesn't want to hear their apology, saying sorry won't get rid of what they did in the past. Anne replaces a hand on his shoulder and tells him that they still have to talk about a random topic. Mako laughs. He appreciates her help, and he unconsciously links arms with her. Siko wants to join in too, but Mako moves his arm away. Siko pouts and decides to hold Anri's hand instead. Anri continues to insist that she and Mako aren't friends, but that works out fine for him. He doesn't think that they're friends either. When Shizuka and Sato see Mako smiling, they have a mental breakdown. Mako thanks Anri. For just a moment, he was able to bury the memories of his past. Haruka looks out the window, sees her older brother with two girls and realizes that he was telling the truth about having friends. Mako and Anri continue to exchange messages through the web novel application, and as the days pass, this is all they do. This is the limit of their relationship, one between a reader and a writer. The day to form groups for the class trip arrives, and everyone gets up from their seats to start forming groups. Mako knows that he's bound to be left out, and so will Anri. Their classmates continue to badmouth them, regardless of what they're doing. Anri, annoyed and fed up with the situation, stands up, marches to the blackboard, swipes the chalk out of the class representative's hand, and writes her name and Mako's together. They're a group now, just the two of them, and she's sure that everyone doesn't mind that the two class pariahs are together. Sayuri has no objections. Anri walks back to her seat, and she tells Mako not to get the wrong idea. They're not friends. She just wants to go home as fast as possible. Mako rolls his eyes. It doesn't matter to him, and yet without a word, the two have undoubtedly become closer. They're not friends. They're just Nayanta and Pamiko. Mako asks Anri why they have to be in the same group, and she points out that it's better than them being forced into groups that hate them. He concedes that she has a point. She tells him that he should be more direct and straightforward, but he prefer not to talk about school right now. Instead, Anri asks him about the progress of his story's next chapter and the topic of his work being published. He replies that all he has to do is proofread his work before uploading it, but on the topic of getting it published, he still isn't sure. While he's honored that management thinks his work is good enough for print in the end, it's still just a hobby, and due to his age, he might cause trouble for his parents. Anri notices him being quiet, and she tells him that there's no need to rush. His meeting with Siko is still tomorrow. Despite Siko's demeanor, she's quite serious about her work. So serious, in fact, that she's never had a boyfriend as a result. Mako's eyes widen. Anri seems to like her sister a great deal, but she downplays it by saying that it's just because they're family. Mako wonders if his father, who hasn't been home in a long time, would approve of him being a light novel author. Anri tells him to quit looking so gloomy, and she poses a challenge. A light novel battle. The theme is their upcoming field trip, and the word limit is 500 words. They'll write a short story and have Siko judge which is the better one. Anri finishes before Mako, and she boasts that she's the faster writer. That isn't exactly a measure of how good a writer is. As they exchange phones to read each other's work, Mako begins crying. Anri smugly asks if it's because her work is just that good. Mako smiles and says that it is. The next morning, Mako skips breakfast as usual and heads to school. He stops right at the door, and he recalls his mother's words from the past and how they negatively impacted his childhood growing up. He'll never forget them. The axe forgets, but the tree remembers. He wonders how she react to his story being published, and he's pessimistic about it. He decides not to say anything for now since his meeting with Siko is still after school. Before he leaves, Haruka throws some mochi at him and wishes him a safe trip. At school, Sayuri calls Mako and Anri to the staff office. The two claim not to be friends, but that's none of Sayuri's business. She's not here to tell them to lay low or not make any trouble, but to offer them a listening ear. She won't tell them to make as many friends as possible, because the truth is, sometimes all you need is just a few. Even one friend is plenty. What's important is that you can trust them. Mako and Anri have been hurt enough in the past to know that they can never trust anyone again. Someday, somehow, Someone close to you will betray you. Sayuri might know a thing or two about being betrayed, 
and she hopes that they find someone that they don't mind being betrayed by once or twice. Neither of them don't get what she means, but at the same time, they both glance at each other. Sayuri's business is finished, and she tells them that they can go back to their classrooms. On the way back to class, Anri wonders what that talk was all about. Mako doesn't really get it either. Before they can continue, a girl calls out to Mako. The girl says that she's always wanted to talk to him, but he doesn't recognize her, and he quickly assumes that this is some kind of prank. Her hair has been cut short, but she's Kisaragi, one of the girls who gave him a fake confession. Mako knows that Anri is waiting for him, so he tries to cut their little reunion short. Not that he wanted a reunion in the first place. Kisaragi asks him to hear her out, explaining that she was intimidated into making that fake confession. She was afraid that her friends would hate her if she didn't. She claims that she really does like him, and that she'd like to start over. Mako isn't his usual self. Usually, he'd try to cut the conversation short, but right now, he finds himself prying for answers from her. He doesn't want to have a conversation like this in front of Anri. Kisaragi invites him on a date this weekend, but he gives her the same answer as the others. It's too late. Kisaragi cries and physically throws herself at him, but Anri steps in and says that Mako is currently busy planning the field trip with her. Kisaragi snaps at her not to get in the way of her and Mako, but Anri points out that she was the one who interrupted them first. Anri grabs Mako's hand and drags him away. Mako looks back at a fuming Kisaragi, and he ends up not seeing how red Anri's ears are. Anri sheepishly says that he'll be late for his meeting with Siko if he dilly-dallies any longer. She notices him staring at his hand, and she offers to hold his hand again. He replies that it would make her blush, so he turns her down. Anri makes a fist and dares him to say that again. During Shizuka's middle school graduation, she tries to speak to Mako, but he replies in an overly polite manner and excuses himself. Shizuka is confused, but since she'll be attending the same high school as him, she decides to just speak to him there again. Back in the present, Shizuka recounts her encounter with Mako and Anri with Haruga and Sato. Sato gives credit where credit is due. Anri does look kind of hot, and she's jealous of her smooth skin. The three girls discuss what kind of girl Anri is, especially since she has her own share of bad rumors. All Sato knows is that people call her a delinquent, but she notes that she's always alone in the classroom. At the very least, they know that she's friends with Mako. Haruka remembers that Kisaragi was also looking for Mako, though she didn't take her seriously at first. Shizuka shares a rumor that Kisaragi was once good friends with Mako, and they're not surprised. Haruka remarks that Kisaragi is quite popular with the boys despite her plain and quiet appearance. Haruka also recalls another girl named Nanako, but she deems her and Kisaragi irrelevant to the conversation at hand. Haruka brags that this morning Mako was kinder than usual since he accepted her mochi. Shizuka and Sato have no idea what this girl is talking about, and Haruka explains that Mako isn't as scary or guarded as before, and she thinks that it might have something to do with Anri. The mood suddenly becomes stammer. The three girls all acknowledge that they have feelings for Mako, but they also know that they've made a mistake. In a flashback to the playground incident, Anri was too preoccupied with her wound to realize that Mako was being blamed as the bad guy. She wanted to say that it was all an accident, but due to the heated atmosphere, she froze up. She couldn't bring herself to tell everyone that they were making a mistake. For a young child, their early years form who they are when they grow up, and being made a pariah like that at such a young age had a profound effect on Mako. She was scared that Mako would stay gloomy and detached well into middle school, and she knew that she had a duty to clear his name. However, afraid that she'd be blamed for not saying anything from the very start, she took the coward's way out and kept her mouth shut. She thought that she could make amends in high school, but life is never that easy. Haruka somberly says that she knew it. She heard about the incident at the schoolyard, and she knew about how his classmates reacted to her brother. When she talked to her friends about it, they claimed that Mako was a violent boy who only acted nice at home. They even said that because Mako isn't the real son of Haruka's mom, they'll grow up all alone. When Haruka came home that day, she told her mom that Mako hit a girl, speeding up Mako's life being ruined. At the time, Mako spent a lot of time playing with Shizuka, but Haruka wanted him to pay more attention to her. She thought that if she troubled him a little bit and showered him with kindness later, it would work out. That's textbook manipulation, and it's very toxic. Predictably, it didn't work, and Haruka realized it too late. Now their relationship is strained, and all Mako does is give her empty responses. She truly regrets not being kinder to him sooner. Sato shares what her mistake was, the rumor that Mako attacked her. She thought that he attacked her too, but on the day of their middle school graduation, 
An anonymous source told her that Maka was only trying to protect her from things falling off the shelves due to an earthquake. Sato couldn't quite understand it at first. She knew there was an earthquake that day, but she was just surprised that Mako jumped on her. At the time, all she heard were people saying that he assaulted her. She knew deep down that Mako would never do those things, but then all of a sudden, people started paying attention to her by calling her cute. She was a gloomy girl, and she never had this many people pay attention to her before. She was happy about it, and because of that, she didn't immediately ask Mako for his side of the story. Because of that incident, Sato became more popular and began dressing stylishly. School life became so bright and fun that she forgot all about the incident. Haruka knows that she was so popular that few people even confessed to her, but Sato rejected them all. To her, no one will ever be as good as Mako. When someone told her the truth behind the library incident, memories of her happy days at the library with him came flooding back, and she realized that she had feelings for him. During graduation, she tried calling out to him, but he never looked back. She, too, tried to make amends in high school, but it was too little, too late. All three girls regret their actions, and they'd brainstorm on a way to get Mako to forgive them. They know that no matter how they explain themselves now, it will be meaningless. They want to apologize, but Mako doesn't want their apologies. Shizuka suggests that they should take action, so that Mako returns to his kinder self, and both girls are on board with this idea. However, she doesn't mean that they have to talk to him directly. Haruka concurs. In the first place, they were the ones who hurt him, so trying to talk to him directly would be counterintuitive. Their only course of action right now, according to Haruka, is to support the girl who has managed to find a foothold in Mako's heart, Anri. Though a bit hesitant at first, they realize that this is the only way they can impact Mako from afar. The three are in agreement. They'll support the budding relationship between Mako and Anri. Their first plan of action is to prevent Kisaragi and Nanako from interfering on the upcoming field trip. The three girls laugh. Though the reason binding them all together isn't a good one, they're glad that they came together and talked it out. Mako reflects on the past few days' events. Haruka gave him a mochi one morning. Haruka hates mochi, so Mako pretended that he liked it to save her from eating it. He always used to think that he had to protect Haruka at all costs, but nowadays he feels nothing. He wonders why Shizuka and Sato suddenly started acting nice and considerate toward him after everything that happened in the past. In the past, he would have jumped at a chance to be with them in a heartbeat, but now he feels nothing. He knows that they're not at fault. He turned out the way he is now because of the harsh realities of life. He can't trust anyone. His heart is a hollow shell. She's okay. He's just Ken. Mako meets with Siko, and she calls his father on the phone to be his legal guardian and advisor. Mako is surprised that his father agreed to show up in the first place. Earlier that morning, Mako contacted his father and told him about how his online web novel was being published. His father, a cautious but reasonable man, agrees to be at the meeting to give him advice. Mako is still a minor after all. His father notices him speaking in an overly polite manner, but acknowledges that he is partly at fault for that. He tells Mako that there are people who acknowledge him, but in various forms. He's one of them. Mako should be proud, he says, and he congratulates him on his big break. Back in the present, Siko asks Mako again for his permission to publish his story as a book and spread it around the world. Across the table is Anri, who nervously awaits his answer. If his book gets published too, then she'll also have to try her best. Anri might not be his friend, but she's certainly his rival. Mako agrees to have his book published, despite the trouble it may cause for his parents. More than that, he begs them to make it into a book. Anri leans against his back and congratulates him. Mako can't thank her enough. He was able to find the strength to move on because of her. After saying goodbye to Anri and Siko, Mako returns home, where his mother is waiting for him. She asks him why he didn't tell her about his book before, and he pretends that he didn't have enough time to tell her. He assures her that he won't cause her any trouble, and he won't ask for anything else. He'll go to a good university and good company, so he asks her to let his book be published. His mother is confused, but she wants to celebrate with him and Haruka by eating outside. Mako tells her that it won't be necessary. She asks him why he didn't consult her on this matter first, and Mako frankly tells her that due to past experiences, he judged that she'd only ruin the publishing negotiations. He believes that she'd never understand his aspirations. Mako confronts her about the playground incident and the other incidents in middle school, and how she never trusted him in any of them. Because of that, his heart has become scarred, and he finds it difficult to trust others. Realizing that he's said too much, he apologizes, and he promises to leave the house immediately if he causes trouble again in the future. Mako's stepmother breaks down in tears. Moments later, Haruka bursts into the room, saying that she doesn't want Mako to leave, but if he really wants to, 
she suggests that he live with their grandparents instead. Their mother opposes such a thing, but Haruka tells her that Mako turned out the way he is because they didn't believe him in the past. The best thing they can do to make amends is to give him space. Haruka tells Mako that she'll handle their mother, so she hopes that he can live in peace without anyone disturbing him. Mako's never seen her make a face like that before, and though he thought that he'd never feel anything from her words again, he begins to doubt even himself. For the first time in years, Mako pats her on the head and thanks her. Haruka cries and promises to send him off with a smile. The next morning, Mako bumps into Anri on the way to school, who is curiously wearing a pair of glasses. He shares that a lot of things happened last night, so Anri decides to go on ahead. Mako wants to walk with her, but when she brings up that he might get involved in her bad rumors, he replies that it's a little too late for that. He just really feels like walking to school with her today. He asks her about the glasses, and she ignores him. Earlier that morning, Mako's mom gave him a key to their deceased grandparents' house and all of the New Year's money she saved up for him over the years. She isn't quite ready to see him off yet, but she promises to talk to his father one day so that they can have a proper conversation with him. She reminds him to eat well, do his laundry, clean his room, and spend his money wisely. But above all, she tells him that he's always welcome to return here. Just like that, Mako is living on his own, with no preparation. Anri is a little jealous of him. The house is already furnished, but he still needs to buy a few things before he can really start living independently. Anri offers to go shopping with him. Mako never thought that things would turn out this way, but as far as Anri's concerned, this is a good thing. She points out that his mother also needs some time to come to terms with how things turned out. Suddenly, Anri stops in her tracks. She realizes that this means he won't come to the food court anymore. Mako realizes it too. He only went to the food court because he didn't want to go home. Instead, Mako tells Anri that she's free to come over to his place anytime she wants, though he'll still occasionally go to the food court. He doesn't want to just stop talking with her there. Anri is a bit embarrassed at the prospect of going to a boy's house alone, especially since they aren't friends in the first place. She asks him if she won't be a bother, and he insists that she can come over. At school, Mako and Anri can feel like people are staring at them, and Mako remarks that it must be because of her glasses. Amri replies that it must be because of the stupid smile on his face. When Sato arrives at the classroom and spots Mako, and Amri talking to each other, she smiles. Suddenly, a random girl named Mizuki walks up to Mako and starts talking to him. She seems to think that he and Anri are a really good match, and she's glad that she didn't confess. Anri is a silly goose and puts Mizuki in a chokehold. Anri snaps at Mizuki and asks her why she thinks that she and Mako are a couple. They aren't even friends, or so they claim. Mizuki pats her head. She isn't very threatening with glasses on, but to answer her question, Mizuki says she overheard Mako inviting Anri over to his house. Sato saves their skin by dragging Mizuki away, but Anri's mood to re has already been ruined. Instead, she suggests that they start planning what to buy for Mako's house, and he thinks of buying a cup. But not for him, for her. For a man who's emotionally closed off, he's one smooth operator. Mako and Anri visit the local shopping mall and buy everything they need, but they don't pick up a new cup. Anri doesn't see the need to, since she's sure that his grandparents' house is sure to have some spare tableware. Besides, they're just there to write books and nothing else. It's not like they're friends anyway. Anri hurries him up so they can go home, but Mako stops by the restroom first. While waiting, Anri opens her phone and starts reading the new chapter of Mako's web novel. You know what that means. She's about to get hit on. I stand corrected. It's her old schoolmates, who seem to have some history with her. They sarcastically ask if she's waiting for a friend, knowing full well that she'd never be able to have any friends. Unable to say anything, Anri just clutches a shopping bag and hopes that they stop. They don't stop. They bring up her cringe web novel, and how Momo grabbed her phone and shared it with the rest of her class. The girls discuss calling Momo so that she can join in, and Anri finally finds the courage to stand up for herself. Mako returns just in time, like Gandalf at the Battle of Helm's Deep. She leads with him while her old friends are shocked that she's with such a handsome-looking boy. One of them tries to muddy Anri's name, and they invite Mako to hang out with them instead. But what really irritates Mako is when they badmouth Anri's light novel. He snaps at them to never go near Anri again, because she's his precious friend. The girls are left speechless, and Mako grabs Anri's hand so they can go home. Anri starts crying, and he tells her that doing that is ruining her delinquent image. Though he did cry when someone threw a rock at him once, Mako rummages through the shopping bags and gives her a Mucky Mouse cup. He noticed her eyes light up when she was looking at it earlier, so he thought of buying it for her. This is his token of appreciation for her help today. 
At that moment, Amri finally understood the meaning of Sayuri's words. To find someone you can completely trust, she decides that he doesn't mind being betrayed by Mako at all. At that moment, did they become friends?